Um, so today I decided that I would vlog, just kind of take you with me. I'm doing a bunch of different stuff, trying to get a lot of things done. And I thought, I might be able to record some of it and maybe uh, some of it might be interesting. So it is the Sunday after Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a, a very happy Thanksgiving. I know I did. Lots of food was had. Family was here, which is always wonderful. But I've been trying to get stuff done this week. And let me show you what I have accomplished so far and then what I plan on doing today that I'm going to take you with me to see. So yesterday in this roaster, um, I roasted the turkey carcass and um, I also cooked a turkey breast as well as a turkey a whole turkey and a turkey breast for Thanksgiving and I put all the bones in there let that cook all I did it the night before and I let it cook for I don't know almost two days and then I canned up the stock look at this gorgeousness all the jars sealed I had two more jars that I put in the fridge and then I added it to what I'm doing now. I've got two ham hocks in here. So I'm gonna make with the leftover, cause I also made a ham for Thanksgiving, with the leftover ham and ham hocks, I'm going to do white bean. Here's the beans, I soaked those overnight. White bean and ham soup. So I used the two extra turkey stalks along with a whole bunch of just um, regular water to, um, I'm gonna cook these all day, and then the evening I will can everything up. I've got some of my green onion tops, carrots, and celery already chopped up in here, ready to just, you know, I'm gonna cook those a little bit in a little bit of oil, and then add a little bit of these to all the jars. I'm hoping I can get at least 12 pint jars out of this and out of that. I mean, the beans is really what's you know, there doesn't need to be a ton of ham or a ton of veggies. It just, as long as the stock has good flavor and the beans are cooked, you know, to perfection, which I'm not going to cook my beans because they're going to spend 75 minutes in a pressure canner. They will be cooked. So I'm not cooking them. I just soaked them so that they kind of be a little bit ready for the pressure canner. But um, another thing I did yesterday was I ran over, I had collected some walnuts. I just wanted to see if I could uh, harvest and... Uh, have my own walnuts we were hiking one day and there was this area that had like tons of walnuts laying all over the ground and so I got a bag and we put some in a bag and I ran over them with a car yesterday <laughs> took off the outer shell and now I'm kind of soaking them so they're you know they're getting there they're really getting there um but I guess this is uh you could really like dye a shirt or something with this stuff that's that that stuff is potent I tell you what that but I've, uh, I rinsed them off, got all the goopity stuff, but now it's just the nut and I'm trying to get, you know, what's, oops, what's left in there out of there. So these got canned up yesterday and they're a little bit, you can tell they're a little bit, they need washed still, but the caps came off this morning and they all sealed perfectly. So I'm going to wash these up, label them, and then stick them up in my, um, canning pantry. Uh, what else did I do yesterday? Oh, I cooked up a whole bunch of pumpkins. So I grew... These are my pumpkins I grew. And then we also bought some very interesting ones. So every year we go to this um, greenhouse slash, it's called Mile Level Greenhouse. And what is it called? I can't remember, but they always have such unique pumpkins. I'll throw up some pictures. I took pictures of them because I don't know what the varieties are, but they were interesting. So I'm going to print off the pictures. And then when I save the seeds from them, which is what I did, I will put the picture in with the saved seeds. So that's something else I did yesterday. Not only did I carve these pumpkins and seed them, but I cooked a bunch of them up. Um, and then I pureed the squash slash pumpkin pure and made like a pumpkin puree. And I'm planning on canning some soups with that as well. So if any of you guys have any good recipes on um, squash soup or like pumpkin soup or whatever, leave them in the comments because I tried one last year and it was okay. I ate it, but I didn't enjoy it, if you know what I mean. I had two really large containers full of it. And then I still had all these that I cooked up right there. And I don't have any place to store all this stuff. Um, I'm still trying to get through my tomatoes. So my freezers are full. We have another turkey in the freezer. That takes up a lot of space. I know you think, oh my gosh, you, you have plenty of space. I don't. So I thought, well, I'll give the chickens the cooked squash that I have left that I don't think I'm going to need. And, you know, you know, feed for the chickens. That always helps out a little bit. So 
but it's not going to waste. And then once they've picked at it enough, I'll throw the outside um, skin in my compost pile. So, but anytime I save seeds, I put them underneath of a ceiling fan. So I've got the fan going, but these are all the pumpkin seeds. And then I've got them on a plate. I labeled the plate. Then every, I don't know, six hours, I come through here and I stir them up because when they're a little damp, they get stuck to the plate. But you just kind of... So I'm just making sure they get dry like this. And then if there's any leftover of the this stuff, once it's dry, it comes right off. But there's my... Pumpkin seeds, all different kinds. Look at these giant ones. And I could like even roast these and eat these too. That would be good that way, but um, I might do that with a couple of like these big ones. Those might be interesting to roast some, so I might do that. I also need to record a couple videos. So I've got my November trades right here. And then I've also got a Baker Creek one that I need to do a haul on and show you what I'm gonna be doing. Um, as far as uh, different things that I'm planning on doing with my garden this year, I'm, 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 I've got a whole bunch of different things. <laughs> um, I like to try new things, so there's a whole lot of different seeds in that packet there. Also, I need to undecorate for Thanksgiving. As you can see, I've kind of sort of started. Um, I put stuff on the table, but I've got to take down all the fall stuff. I Everybody like gets ready for Christmas, but I have always started my Christmas after Thanksgiving because I like to decorate for Thanksgiving. So I've got all my pumpkins everywhere and all this stuff. Um, but I got to take it all down because the husband got the Christmas tree down for me. I don't know if I'm going to have time to put that up today, but I do need to get it up um, by next weekend because we are going to decorate next weekend for sure, the Christmas tree and the rest of the house for Christmas. But on the top of the list to do... I put up Ben's favorites today, Ben's favorite tomatoes today, and I had to get that done. And it's already, like I told you, editing takes me forever. So it's already like 1230 and I need to get outside. This is at the top of my list. I have got to get this done. First, I'm going to take these squash out to the chickens, but I've got to dig up my dahlia tubers. It has been cold a few times. They've been dead for a while and I need to get them out of the ground. Otherwise they're going to rot. So that's first and foremost. So I'm getting out there right now to do it. So I need to take off my sweater and put on my jacket and start digging. Okay. Well, that did not take long at all. There they all are. I got all my tubers. They come out of the ground. It took me like 10 minutes to get these out of the ground. I don't know why I procrastinate with things that don't take that long. So I'm down here in the basement with the wood pellet stove. It gets nice and dry and hot down here. I'm going to leave these down here for a few days to dry out because they're, you know, the, the dirt in them is wet and moist and they'll get dry and I'll be able to clean them up quite a bit better. Make sure there's no yucky or rotten spots on any of them. But you can see these are the older tubers, the darker ones. And then you can see the newer ones that were just formed this year. Isn't that cool? Um, so... Like this one really needs to be split. I'm so nervous to do it, but I think I'm going to try my hand at it. I wanted to say this, if you avoid tubers because you live in an area where you have to dig them up and replant them every year, and you just think it's gonna take a lot of time, it really doesn't. You just put them in a, you, you just put them in a pot, let them sprout, and then stick them in the hole. I've been using the same areas um, because when I dug up the holes, I made sure that there was nice, rich, loose soil in the holes. And so when I go to dig them back out, I just take a pitchfork. I actually have a video, I think it's like a whole video of just me digging up my dahlia tubers and then how I store them and all that. So I can link that down below. But it just take a pitchfork, get out far enough away, get out far enough away that you're not gonna be, you know, ramming the pitchfork into the tubers and then just very gently like lift up and they just come right out of the ground. I'm telling you, it didn't take me but like one minute for each of these to get them up out of here. So that task is done, but I want to head back outside. There's one more thing I want to check and see if there's anything to harvest. Let's go.
Well, it was as I ex had expected. But, I mean, I did get something. As late in the season as it is, not, not bad. I got, you know, this will make one nice meal. So, this area right here, there was like three plants that did okay. So I kind of knew that this is probably the only thing I was gonna get over in this corner, and I was right, but it's something. Okay, guys, it is now four, four o'clock, back in the kitchen. I took a little break to have lunch and just a little downtime, and now it is time to can up the ham and bean soup. Okay, so I took the ham hocks out oh, of the and... <laughs> Oh yeah, how's it look from this angle? It's so different. Okay, I took the ham hocks out. I took I had to put a I put a few bay leaves in here as well. Um they're still in there somewhere, but I'll be careful not to pour them into the jars. But I also added a little bit of this because I only had just a tad left, so I scraped it clean. But better than bouillon um, ham base. So I just put the last little bit of scraps into the stock. Um, now I'll toss it. But I need to pick the meat off of the ham hocks. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of the veggies and all of these. A little bit of beans about halfway up. And then I'm going to fill the rest with the beautiful deliciousness that is in this roaster. Okay, so I've got all of these canned up. It's 12, so it's an entire case of pint jars. And I had beans and still hadn't used up the ham hock. And I still have some broth left. So I am going to can up these two. I don't have any veggies left. I probably could go out into the greenhouse and f harvest a few carrots. Um, I do still have some celery and some onions, but I'm going to be lazy and I'm just going to do beans and ham and broth in these jars. So I'm sure it'll still be good. It just won't have a little oomph of flavor that the veggies add to it, but that's okay. Um, I have a couple more things I need to get done today, so I'm just going to cut a little corner here. And I am using the big boy today so I can do it all at one time. So I just turned the heat on. I'm kind of doing like a cold pack method um, where everything's kind of cooled down and I'll just heat everything up slowly. Now I'm going to do the other ones. Okay, so they are all in the pot here and I'm just waiting for it to come up to pressure. It'll steam for 10 minutes and I'll put the weight on. Wait till it comes up to pressure. And then 75 minutes later, I will have 18 jars of ham and bean soup ready for the winter months. I was gonna record a couple of hauls, but then I thought listening to that thing in the background is probably not <laughs> something that anybody wants to listen to. So I think I'm going to, what I'm gonna do while I wait for that, cause I can do, it's only five o'clock. So I got my kitchen all nice and cleaned up, the roaster and everything's nice and clean. Got the towel ready for the jars. I do need to get out my ring light and uh, my tripod there so that I'm ready for um, recording the hauls. Uh, I did wanna say this, that uh, I did not get everything done that I wanted to today. I most certainly did not. I had a few other things on my list. I think I told you I was gonna undecorate um, and possibly put up my tree. That is not happening. That usually takes quite a bit. That'll be next Thursday. Thursday, I will break out. That, that It's definite, because it'll be December then, and that means it's gotta be done. December is Christmas, so. Uh, I also wanted to up pot those micros right there. That didn't get done either. They'll be fine and for another week, they're okay. So that's okay. I didn't get all this stuff done, but I got the most important things, the things that I really wanted to get done. and. So, I had a good day. It was an enjoyable day. I accomplished some things, canned up some food for my family this winter, and uh, learned a new skill. That's the first time I've ever canned white bean and ham soup. Hope it turns out good. <laughs> and I'm just gonna give myself some grace, and the decorating stuff can wait till next weekend. 
But after I do those couple things, I think once this is set on the 75 minute timer, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna sit down. I'm going to look at your comments. That's another thing that I procrastinate with is reading and answering comments back. I don't know why. And then they get all backed up and it takes me like a couple of hours to get back to you guys. I feel a lot of times inadequate with my words. You all are just so lovely with your comments. Some of you put so much information into them and so much kindness and your encouragement, it means the world to me, it does. Um, and sometimes when it comes time, and I wish you could just see my reaction or feel what I feel sometimes when I'm reading your comments. You are such a confidence booster and if it wasn't for your comments, I probably would have stopped doing this. <laughs> um, I shouldn't say that. I really enjoy doing it, and I, but at the same time, just thank you. I, see, there I am again with my words. I don't know how to express my gratitude. I am very grateful for all the time that you take to write to me, to comment to me, to interact with me, to connect with me. I truly appreciate it. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to try to get my emotional brain going so that I can comment back. And I just, I hope I can convey to you all um, what you mean to me. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. You really fulfill um, my life. Uh, mm. See, I, I don't know. I, I apologize. I'm not great with words. I'm not great with conveying my feelings. I'm working on it, um, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna end this video now with my thank you and my gratitude and my love for you all. And I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, I hope that you all enjoy your day. Bye, everyone.